This is uh, case number one, uh, bite wings. And what I like with the SUNY, I mean, you can see how clear that is, but I can see really good detail. Obviously, we're always looking for interproximal decay. So I can see really good detail. I can see where he has some bone loss. He's an older guy. I don't see, I'm looking for interproximal calculus buildup, and I don't see any. And with the, the image quality, I have all the information that I need on traditional bite wings. This is an implant case. I've placed my implant, and now I'm looking to see that the implant head, neck is at the level of bone that I want it to be, and that the bottom of the implant is at the bottom of the hole that I drilled and it looks like it's screwed in really well. Everything looks nice. So I have, you know, clear, great image quality for implants. Little problem with the light here, but you can see the, the fracture line across here, right at the gum line. Patient came in, uh, tooth was bothering him, obviously a little bit mobile. And right there, you can see the fracture. And, you know, really quickly we determined what his problem was and uh, laid on the good news to him that I need to take a pan so I can get a 3D image, a, a cone beam, because now I'm going to put an implant in. So stage one on the implant, a really quick picture, and then we'll take one with the implant screwed in. So again, I, I get the information that the collar is down to the height of the bone and we've got the implant down right real close to the bottom of the hole that I drilled. So I, I know that um, he's gonna be good to go. Patient came in, her chief complaint was, it hurts on the upper left. Uh, sensitivity to pressure and cold and couldn't pinpoint a particular tooth. So, you know, issues that I see are large filling, endo I'm not sure of, roots in the sinus. So it could be, you can see the outline of the sinus really well all the way along here. Could be multiple issues wrong or just a sinus infection. Looking at this tooth all the way around, I see the PDL, you know, really nicely all the way around. Old root canal, maybe a little bit short here, but not really any periapical pathology. And unfortunately, the, the buccal roots are behind the sinus, so it's really hard to tell if there's an issue there. So again, with the comb beam technology, we can take our diagnosis to the next level, if I'm not quite sure, but I've got really good images there, so it gives me you know, the ability to, to, to diagnose better than before. This lady was having a little bit of sensitivity to pressure um, on a previously treated elsewhere root canal. So, you know, I'm looking around. I see a little bit of thickening of the PDL on this side. But on the distal root, I see a space between whatever the obturation material is and whatever this is. Is this a fractured instrument or... What, why do we have this space? And, you know, I'm not quite sure. Certainly I'd get a, a 3D comb beam and take a look at, at the root from the inside out and see what's going on. But, you know, with the, the SUNY sensors, I've got a really nice image. Gives me, if I don't have a comb beam, information that this tooth is probably a problem and this distal root probably needs a retreatment.